I first got out of the Army, I went straight to, the, to Mexico to the mission fields. And uh, I, I spent time with a missionary named Wayne Myers. Wayne's 100 years old this year, still preaching. And I ran into a lifestyle that absolutely pricked my heart, grabbed hold of me. I saw a, a man that was living to give. I mean, he, he was he was living his life on planet Earth with the purpose of blessing somebody, lifting somebody, embracing somebody. And I saw that. I said, ah, this is it. I, this is the I'm, I'm embracing this. And I right there made a vow to God and to myself. And I said, this is how I will live the rest of my life, living to give because it's the very nature of God. So I want to encourage you to hook up with that same lifestyle of giving. I mean, embrace it, living to give. And you can give to your local church. You can give to other ministries. I've partnered with ministries since around the world since I was a teenager. And I tell you, God's blessed me for it. I wouldn't trade it. You can also partner with us. We're always happy to em embrace partners. We pray for them every day. But as long as you hook up with that concept, that lifestyle of God, living to give, then it'll be a blessing to others and it'll certainly be a blessing to you. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello, everyone. God bless you and welcome today to More Than Conquerors program, Terry Mize Ministries. We are delighted to be with you. And we're going to talk about some things today uh, that are going to really uh, maybe, you know, help you think right on some stuff. And we're going to talk about things people say. <laughs> and we're going to get right into it. Darling, we want to ask you uh, what the Word of God says about several different things. In fact, I've got five cards here and another whole list of things that we want to address that are in everyday colloquialisms, euphemisms, things people stay off the cuff. And so I want you to pick one of these and then we're gonna talk about these topics and you're gonna give us these wonderful answers from the Word of God. Pick, so a, pick card, a card, any card. <laughs> any card, there you go. And this one says, um, so many times we hear people say, hmm. when there's been sometimes a tragedy or a funeral or something like that, they say, if you need anything, let me know. And we just want to ask, what does that mean? <laughs> what are the parameters that I'm dealing with? And people mean well, but darling, what are you going to well, say about the, that? The, that could be a long deal, which I don't want to make it long. But that, that's, that's a real problem yes. when, when someone passes away. Yes. People don't know what to say. Right. They just don't know what to say. And the bottom line is really there is nothing to say. Right. Except I love and you. And you need to remember that. I love you. If you need to talk, I'm here for you. Right. You know. I showed up. Yeah. I've and, got my checkbook. And, what and, can we do? And then, <laughs> and then do something for them financially if you can. Certainly right. pray for them. Yes. Uh, but usually you and I swoop in, you know, with, right. certainly with flowers, of course. That's just a given. Right. But then also if it's a widow, we usually send them an offering. Right. Uh, or if it's uh, just depending on the situation. But they just don't know what to say. Exactly. I remember when my son, Paul David, uh, was killed in an auto crash back in 2004. Uh, it was in June, and then Brother Copeland's meeting in Fort Worth at Southwest yes. Believers was was the last week of July, first week of August, and so that was the first meeting we had gone to uh, after Paul died. And uh, Jackie had just begged me to stay home and not go preach, and Paul's little wife Jessica had begged me to stay home and not go preach, so I just stayed home from June, July, and all. And, and so we got to Brother Copeland's meeting. We was at the hotel, and, and we was 
dressed for church, coming down out of the hotel, walking over to the convention center. And, of course, the lobby was full of my friends. Right, right. You know? And so Jackie and I couldn't take two steps right. without someone grabbing us and hugging us right. and crying. And, of course, we burst into tears. Sure. You know, and then and then, th- then as soon as they let us go, the next person would grab us. And, I mean, just all the way to the convention right. center, right. it was just grabbing and crying and grabbing and crying. And people saying, if you need anything, let me know. If you need anything, let me know. If you need, if you need anything at all, just let me know. And they mean well. Yeah. But, you know, you think, well, what does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Do I, do I tell them, yeah, these kids need, you know, their daddy's gone, they need money, or, right. or this little girl's a widow now, she's going to yeah. need, you know. I mean, what does that mean? What do we need? And yeah. so you need to be specific about things. And your closer friends, you you know what they mean. Right. You know, but but it's, it's got to be just a common thing to say, hey, if you need anything, let me know. Then go <laughs> to the movies, you know. And, no, I, and, yeah. and so. Be um, filled and uh, You know, one one dear friend of mine, after Paul passed away and. He was there at the funeral and then came to our home and, and really good, close friend. And he said, Terry, I'm going to go ahead and leave. He said, uh, he said, everybody's around you and surrounding you and you've got lots of people supporting you. He said, so I'm going to go ahead and leave. But in a few days, they'll all be gone. You'll really need somebody. He said, so I'll be back then. I hadn't seen him since. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, was, that was 20 years ago. 20 you know? years ago. And, right. uh, but because people don't mean what they say or they think they mean it. Right. But it's like, what does that mean? And so you, I've learned the best thing to say over it. In fact, Jackie didn't go back to the meetings. We went that night walking two, right. two or three steps all the way a block and a half to the convention center and then at the convention center. Mm-hmm. And then once we got set down, you know, uh, and then tried to leave, she told me the next day, she said, I can't do that again. She said, I just yeah. can't do that again. I can't run that gauntlet of people that love us. Thank right. God they love us. I'm glad right. they love us. But she said, it just breaks my heart every time I stop and right. hug somebody. So she said, I, she said, you go to the meetings. I'm going to stay in the hotel room and watch it on TV. And yeah. so she stayed the whole week in the hotel room and watched it uh, by the Copeland's meetings on TV. And, and I went to the meetings, you know. But people don't know what to say. So it gets very clumsy, very awkward. And, and then at a, the death of a loved one, you know, people just say a lot of things that just may sound good. Right. But they're not true. Yeah. You have to be careful. You have to be very careful with your words. Another thing they always say when someone passes away, they say, well, don't say you lost your son. Don't say you lost your wife. Don't say you lost your your child. Don't say you lost it. They're not lost. They're in heaven. Well, duh. (laughs) You know, I told people, I said, I'm not saying he's lost like a wayward sock in the dryer that you can't find. Exactly. I'm saying it is a loss. Right. And if you don't think it's a loss... You're just kidding yourself or out of your mind, one or the other, because it is a gut-wrenching. Well, oh, but Terry, they're in heaven. I know they're in heaven. I got the heaven stuff. Not right. a problem. But Terry, he's in your future. I know he's in my future. I don't want him in my future. I want him right now. But but I told Jackie, I said, it, it is a loss because he'll never walk in the door again. Right. And now Jackie's gone. Right. She'll never walk in the door again. Paul will never walk in the door again. Say, hey, Dad, let's get a cup of coffee. Hey, Dad, let's go fishing. Hey, Dad, let's go. That That is a loss. Right. I'm not Absolutely. in fear. I'm Absolutely. not in fear over it. I'm not Absolutely. in depression over it. But it is a loss. Right. It's a loss to those three little kids. You know, they've right. grown up without a daddy. That is a loss. You know, it's a It's a loss to his widow. She's got, she's without a husband all these years. It's a loss. Right. You know, you you buried Dean. I buried Jackie. It is a loss. That's right. We had dinner last night with your kids, you know, and uh, and, and I said to Matt or Abigail, one, I, I said, well, it's like your daddy always said. We bring up Dean all the time, bring yeah. up Jackie all the time. Yeah. And, and it's, we talk it, about them every day. <laughs> it's a loss, though. Yes. They're yes. not here. Yes, yes, they're in heaven. Yes, That's eternity right. is great. Yes, God's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. They're not right. dead. I don't go to the cemetery and talk to the grave marker. They're not there. But I do go to the cemetery and put some flowers there and make sure it looks pretty, you know, just just out of respect. Right. You, you know, Christians, I, I guess I'm going to get off on a soapbox here and I don't mean to, but Christians don't, word of faith Christians are the worst. Uh, and that's the thing we want to talk I, about. I think we don't, this, I think we don't that reverence yeah. or see God's honor to the body, right. to this, the flesh. Right. We always put it down the flesh. Oh, it's just your flesh. Well, well. I, the flesh is what we identify with. Right. When I buried Paul, that 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 body was what I had identified with for 29 years. Right. You know, I held that body. I changed that body's diapers. I, I gave him baths. I took <laughs> yeah, him hunting. That's, that, yeah. that's how I knew it was him. Right. You know, then when Jackie died, I, that's what I that's communicated very true, with. That's very true, Terry. That's very and, true. And, and just stop and think, what happened whenever Moses died? Yeah. Satan 
and an angel fought over the body. Isn't that something? Now, if that body doesn't mean to anything, if that. God doesn't care about the body, he wouldn't have had a war over it. That's right. But I mean, he sent an angel to protect Moses' dead body because for some reason Satan wanted to get it. I don't know why he wanted to get it. But God said, Those are no, some you real don't. Mysteries in the God word. said, No, you don't. Yeah. You are not touching that body. And then God said, In the end, at the, at the last day when the trumpet sounds, uh, the, the dead in Christ are going yes, to rise. Yes, hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit, uh, my dear friend Hilton Sutton told me this years ago, he said, Terry, a cemetery is the most peaceful place in the world. Yes. I said, What? <laughs> he said, yeah, you know, I've married my wife, Joanna, buried my daughter, Lisa. I said, yes, sir, I know that. And he said, and, he, and, I, and I said, you, and of course, I buried my son, Paul. And he said, yes, he said, that's why I'm telling you this. He said, he said, the cemetery is the most peaceful place in the world. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the Bible says when the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ will rise first. Yeah. And he said, Hallelujah. the Holy Spirit does not know when that trumpet's going to sound. That's so he has to hover. You. <laughs> he has to hover Hallelujah. over every yes. grave of every Christian. Thank you, Lord. Because when that trumpet sounds, he has to get them up. Yeah. And he said, <laughs> and sight. he wow. said, the, the sea's going to give up her dead. Yeah. God, God loves that body so much that he's going to bring it back from the dead that's yeah. been eaten by sharks. Right. He's going to put it back together. It's Hallelujah. been cremated. He's going to put it back together. Hallelujah. Uh, he, he, I mean, tell me God doesn't like your flesh. God right. doesn't like your body. Right. Well, that's that's nuts. I'm Christians gonna, get nutty ideas. No, that's and so exactly so right. no, they're not lost. We know where they are. They're in heaven, of course. <laughs> but but it is a gut wrenching loss. And people say, well, Christians shouldn't grieve. Yes, you should. Paul yeah, didn't say don't grieve. He said we say Paul didn't so say don't wrong. grieve. He said we don't grieve like the world, the world does, does because they have no hope. We have right. hope. Right. We know we're going to see them again, but we still miss them. Exactly. We miss Dean today. I miss Dean. You miss yes, Dean. You yes. miss Jackie. I miss Jackie. Sure. You know, I miss Absolutely. Paul David every day. Yes. But I'm not grieving. I'm not depressed. I'm not suicidal. Right. You know, it's just, oh, it's a loss. I can look at a picture of my grandbabies when they were three, four, five years old. Yes. And now they're all 25 and stinky, you know, <laughs> two of them in the Air Force and others got jobs and stuff. And, yeah. But I look at the pictures of when they were three, four, and I say, oh, uh, yeah. I miss them. Right. I mean, I'm in grieving. Miss it it means sword. it's a loss. I, I don't have that little guy anymore. The little guy that used to sit in my lap and drive a boat or, you know. Yeah, right, right. You know, Dean I mean, always said, uh, excuse me, Dean always said about our boys, they'd be playing outside when they were three, four, five, six years, seven, eight years old. And, and they'd be playing outside and that hair would come in. Oh, and, you yeah. know, they had these little cute little Dutch boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Buster Brown haircuts and stuff. And they'd come in and they'd just yell and carry on and dance around the house and everything. Dean said they, they just smell like wet squirrels. I was going to say, and they always stink, you know. <laughs> and I said they were so cute. And you miss that, yeah. you know. And we're talking today about things that are real life. And, and we, you know, we so, know the Word of God talks so it's, about it's that. So it's a great sentiment to say, hey, if you need anything, let me know. Yeah. But you know, um, it's better to do something. Yeah, than nothing. You know, That's it's better to Bill go Dierman ahead. Bill Newman always said that, do something lest you do nothing. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, you know, if, if your heart's really there and you can do something, yes. maybe you can. You, you know, can. Then, then, Listen then to the say, Spirit hey, of God. The best thing is to say, I love you. I love you. I'm here for you. Yes. If you need to talk. When Paul David died, the first thing that happened is Fred Price of course, Fred's in heaven now, but Fred Price called me from California. Right. And uh, and he said, Terry, he said, I've been there, done that. Right. He said, I, I he said, you know that I had a son. Little that, two-year-old. A little two-year-old. Yeah. And he, he said, so if you need to talk to somebody that knows what you're going through, you're, right. you're, you're burying a son. And he said, I buried a son. Right. So if you need to talk to somebody that, that knows what you're talking about, that's been right. there, done that, he said, just give me a call. And I appreciated that. It wasn't a, hey, if you need anything call me yeah. you know no. but, that, but so anyway there there are things we we flippantly say to people because we don't know what to say people don't mean it bad when they say that right they no. they really want to say something nice and comforting and helpful and and they just don't know what to say well what i did and one did. of the worst things they can do renee <laughs> I, i'm sure you experienced this when dean died but people people try to relate to you so they come up and say I know just how you feel. I I I, I buried my grandmother. Well, it's not the same. I know right. how you feel. I, I I buried my dog. 
I've really had people tell me no, that. Oh, right. They my do. dog was part of the family. And I, I know just exactly how, no, you don't know how I feel. That's my son. Mm. You know, and, and people try to, they try to relate. Right. And so they use whatever they've had in their life. But, but you know, the measuring stick isn't the same. You're exactly right. And, but they say something because they feel like I need to say something comforting. But the best thing, I think, is just hug them, love them. Show up. Tell them, tell them if you them. need to talk, I'm here. Call me night or day. Whatever, you know, I'm, I'm praying for you. And then, of course, we always send money or, or, or try to help. And, uh, you know, when Paul died, uh, my friends Dennis and Vicki Burke, I think about Dennis and Vicki all the time because of this. I, I, I feel like sometimes I ought to call them every day and tell them thank you. But when Paul died, they just came to our house immediately. Mm-hmm. And Dennis just canceled schedules. And I mean, they stayed there for like, what, Lynn? They were there for 10 days, maybe. I mean, straight. And, and I mean, they just stayed there and just, just was in the house and, 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 and filled questions for us and did, right. you know, of course, my son Lynn was a, was a champion, you know, uh, uh, doing stuff uh, at the time. But I mean, you know, people, them showing up like that, Dennis and Vicki. Right. Oh my goodness. What a, what a blessing and what a breath of fresh air and what a, a relief, like wow, you know. Uh, but but you know, we some, sometimes when someone dies, we they're the elephant in the room nobody wants to talk about. Right. You know, it's like don't talk about them; that'll hurt somebody. Well, no. Whenever you and I got married, I told you, I said, now you bring pictures of Dean uh, to the house and you put them on the wall and put them on the table. I said, so when your grandkids come over here, I they'll did. see they'll see yeah. Papa Dean. Right. Uh, you know, I want I want my grandkids to see Jackie. I want your grandkids right. to see Absolutely. Dean, uh, because they were part of your life. Dean was part That's of your right. life for forty four years of marriage, plus the dating part. Jackie was forty four years plus the dating part. We were together for a long time. That's so right. now you're going to tell me to ignore them that they never existed. Right. We're not going to talk about them anymore. Well, that's ridiculous. No. That's why you and I talk about them all the time. Well, the the concept of these things that we're talking about here today, about if you need anything, uh, you know, let me know, uh, really is it puts you in an awkward position. It does. To reestablish a conversation mm-hmm. and, and and it almost puts you in an undignified situation of asking for something instead of something being offered. Well, and, and, and when we, in the word of faith, we always say we don't make our needs known to anybody. So, right. so it's almost goes cross grain when somebody says, if yeah, you need something, let me know. Me, it messes me up <laughs> you know? uh, to go and call somebody. Well, you said if you, I needed anything to give you a call. Um, and, and, and if it's two months later or three months later, then I, I'm, I'm counting on the uh, kindness of their heart and the compassion they felt at the moment. Right. Uh, three months ago, they're them having that again yeah. now, three months later. Yeah. And, and they've moved on. Yes. Not that you don't move on, but it's just that that was a crisis of the moment yeah. for them. Right. And they're compassionate. Right. And they love you. But like after three months, they've had two or three other people they know died or they yeah. had this yeah. going on or that going on or and this going uh, on. And they, they've forgotten that you're over here. Exactly. You know, maybe hurting. You yeah. know, grieving in some in some form or shape, you know. Right. Uh, I I was just going to say when we were past when Dean and I were pastoring, I had a whole group of ladies that helped me yes, deal you did. with, yes, you with did. Uh, some of the best folks on the planet. Helped me with getting food, whether it's a new baby or a crisis or you know a tragedy or anything at all. Uh, someone, a husband was injured and couldn't go to work, mm-hmm. anything at all like that. We assisted. We immediately right. knew. So you had we had a, team a list. That knew what to I had do. a team of people that knew what to do, and they would check back with me. And I said, who's going to be there with them on Monday? Who's going to be with, there with them on Tuesday? Somebody get over there and mow their grass. Somebody get over there and help with the babies. You know, that kind of thing. And then, you- and then I would say, now... I want us to go back and check in 30 days. Mm-hmm. And I said, they're not, everybody will be there to help now. Right. But in 30 days, in, in two months, in three months, that's when the church needs to stay. Exactly. All the friends need to stay and walk with. I'm telling you, the, the first six months are the worst oh, yeah. to me. But, but and it, then when we say something so flippant, what Terry and I are trying to can tell you today is don't be flippant with your words. Don't be careless. Don't be cavalier. Don't be off the cuff. Well, again, cuff. they don't know what to say. And that's it. Figure out what to say. <laughs> but you, you know, you know, you and I have, have gone in several times when a, when somebody's died 
uh, we'd go in and the Bible says, take care of the widows. Yes. So we've gone in and said, well, let's put ourselves in her place. She, she's got a funeral to plan, so she's going to need a new dress. Right. She's going to need new shoes. That's right. You know, she's going to need to, she's going to need something, right. you know, whatever. She needs something she needs to a be grass about mode. her. She needs, her, she needs her car gassed up and washed. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, put yourself in their position of, right. of, here's what she's going to need, so I'm going to supply that. Well, if you're a real friend, a real church member, a real family member, then begin to think about what they might need. Exactly. And this week, next week, the month after. You know, but, it, it but meant, these cavalier statements meant, that are thoughtless sometimes, well-meaning, but they're not they are producing. Well-meaning. Yeah. They're not producing things that, and and it does put the person that's in need, uh, really in an awkward position. It does. It does. To reestablish your compassion towards them. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're hesitant to ask. So they sit there needing uh, a repair on their house if it's a widow, mm-hmm. or they need something for their child, or they need something in their business, something like that. As Christians, we should have more insight into how to deal Absolutely. with crisis instead of instead of these thoughtless and, and statements for, sometimes if, if you need and, anything. And you don't forget <laughs> them. Me. You don't forget them after the funeral. No, right. You know, it was you such a comfort to me. And, and of course, I was so blessed because Fred Price, Kenneth Hagan Jr., and Kenneth Copeland call me on a regular basis. Right. I, I was amazed they called me so much. Right. You know, I'd just be there at the house, you know, sometimes when the phone rang, I'd say hello, and it'd be Brother Copeland. Yes. One day in particular, I, I could tell he was he was on the speakerphone, and I could tell he was pacing. He wasn't there. I could just tell by the sound. And I just said hello, and he said, Terry, get Jackie on the phone. Right. <laughs> Jackie, it's Kenneth, you know. And so she got on the phone and he just went in. And then I was off preaching somewhere and a month later and he called me and he said, uh, he said, uh, Kenneth hardly ever asked you how you are. That's another one of those questions. How are you? He's kind of, never mind. Uh, so he had never said that. He'd just tell you what the word said. And he called me one day and he said, uh, he said, you're, you're preaching? I said, yeah. And he said, Jackie's at home? I said, yeah. And he said, he said, does she need a, does she need a spanking or does she need a, a hug? And I said, probably both. And he said, well, I'm going to call her. So he hung up and called her. And she answered the phone. He said, Jackie, it's Kenneth. Do you need a spanking or a hug? And she just started crying. She said, well, I need both. And so he, he ministered to her and just told her what the Word said. But, you know, those preachers taking time. Right. Fred Price told me one day, uh, he said, Terry, he said, you and Jackie are so blessed. He said, you've got literally thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people around the world, different countries around the world where you've ministered, they were praying for you. Right. So y'all are being held up in prayer, just amazingly. Thankfully so. And I said, I know, Fred. I said, it, I said it makes me feel guilty because other people don't have this. Other people don't have thousands praying for them. And I said, we do have thousands praying for us, and it's still hard. I still, I still miss him. Right. And he said, I said, I don't know how people make it that don't have the Lord. And don't have Christian friends and don't That's have right. ministers and friends like That's you guys. Right. And I said, I don't know how they make it. He said, they don't. He said, they go to the bottle. They go to the pill bottle, the, the booze bottle. They eat a bullet. They they commit suicide. And they, they get depressed. They get a divorce. He said, they don't make it. And so, so it's vital for us friends to That's hold right. people's hands right. up and, and not just say, if you need anything, but to know full well they do need stuff. Right. If nothing else, they need my love and my prayers and, and my encouragement. You run by and take them, get a cup of coffee. Run by and say, hey, love right. you. Just wanted to. Well, it's it's creative giving, and it's not being careless and cavalier and saying off the cuff uh, euphemism uh, at such serious times. I, I remember and when, life or death or bankruptcy or anything at all. Yeah. Um, be specific. The Holy Ghost will rise up yeah. in you, and it'll help you well, do you know, it. When you know, when Dean passed away, mm-hmm. I remember... Uh, uh, she's a lady now, but she's a little girl that grew up in your church. Right. That we that, that I've known since she's a little girl, her and her sister and her mom, you know, and, and, and now she's a grown woman and got a great job. And I remember she immediately called and, and, and paid for you going to the beauty shop. Yes. Have your hair done, your nails done. Had, she had somebody come mow your grass. She had somebody to bring food yeah. in. I mean, yeah. she just immediately just chop, 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 chop. Yeah. And that was all from your training as a pastor. Well, it was. All those years in church. And, and it's, uh, it's way more efficient 
that way when you are creative you on the inside by the Holy Ghost? Because huh? you, know, you know what they're, not if you need something, but I know what you need. Yes. You know, so th th there are those things, you know, and, and, and I, I, I love that when she did that for you. Oh, it was, it's marvelous. And instead of being like we said, if you need anything, let me know. Well, then figure out and be creative and listen to the Spirit of God. Compassion, we were talking about this in one of the programs, that the real love of God will, will express itself through the goodness of God. And goodness should be an act. And if you're there to really lo show I love, love and compassion, and then, then you need to figure out how to express the goodness of God instead of a flippant cavalier statement. We didn't get, <laughs> well, to, if you need we anything, didn't get to the other cars. You know, let us know. I know. <laughs> and we got a few seconds so left. So <laughs> anyway, we hope this has helped you today. There's so many scriptures we could give you from the Word of God, but there's also a level of intelligence that the scriptures should produce in your thinking that you're not left to cliche everything mm. in life like our generation is trying to make it happen, which dumbs you down terribly. So in the meantime, we're going to confess and say over you today as we leave, you are more, more than, than conquerors. Bye-bye. Did you ever think that God sitting on high looking down on you and dishonoring, disrespecting, not thinking much about you? You know, God said to me when I was just a teenager, He said, I told Joshua to do three things, that if he would do those three things, that he would prosper and be healthy. At that time, I had never heard anybody in my church talk about prosperity. I'd never talk about uh, anybody being successful. And God said, if you'll do those same three things, you will be prosperous, you will be successful. And so I immediately went to Joshua 1.8 to see what God told Joshua. And he said, talk like God, think like God, act like God. If you'll do those three things, you will be prosperous and you will have great success. It absolutely changed my life and it'll change your life. God said, don't let anything uh, uh, from this book of the law not depart from your mouth. Don't let anything come out your mouth but the word. In other words, talk like God. Then he said, meditate that day and night. I mean, not once in a while, not twice a day, but he said all the time, meditate the word of God day and night. And thirdly, he said that you may observe to do or to be a doer of the word, to do according to all that's written therein. And then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. That was just before I went into the mission fields permanently as an 18 year old kid. And it changed my life. And I've been all over the world, lived in the jungles, lived in the desert, lived everywhere, watched God do miracles. And he's prospered me and made me successful, kept me healthy, saved me. He'll do the same thing for you. Get in the word today and do those three things. In this powerful best-selling mini book, God's Opinion of You, Terry Mize explains biblical foundations on how to receive and use the authority God has given you. A mini book that fits in your pocket, but packs a big punch. You'll learn to see yourself how God sees you. Righteous, blessed, more than a conqueror. Get your copy today at terrymize.com.